allowing us to come to your house once again. We give your name, glory, and honor, and praise. We thank you for allowing us all to come safely here together and give you glory, honor, and reverence. We ask that you allow your spirit to flow. We ask that you allow your spirit to fall over all. Rule, rest, and abide with us. He is forth and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's clap our hands. Amen. How many people have been rescued by God? Sometimes we feel so low that you need him to come down and get you yourself. Amen. So once you've been rescued, you don't ever go back. So my, my response is, as the song will start today. Amen.
blessed you. And the Lord has had that blessed you. Give him glory. Amen. Amen. Because he deserves it. He's deserving of these praises. Amen. And he deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah in the temple. Can we just say hallelujah? Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My Time. 
shall stand forever. Amen. 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 As we continue in worship, let us lift our voices in praise and worship to our Lord and Savior as we sing this morning's ever so relevant hymn of praise, Down at the Cross.
traveling and we got a call yesterday, Lady Dr. Gwen's cousin was stuck at the airport and it's possible that she was gonna have to come to the house trying to get back to Ohio. And they decided to wait it out at the airport so that they can get off on an early flight. Then I got a call from Clarkson telling me he couldn't get out of Georgia. Right. But God must have did something good on him. Yeah. Yeah. He answered Sister Kyla's prayers because she's like, y'all can't keep doing this to me. And so we got a treat. We got both of them at the same time. Yeah. We were God, he's a great God, and we want to keep trusting him, especially at a time like this. You know, sometimes we get all caught up in our own feelings and how we feel, whatever. I had to go back. I told my son, if he could, to make a clip of a sermon that I was preaching, and I was preaching on Missionary Sunday, and people were all doom and gloom because the president, um, Biden, had messed up in a debate. Nobody knew what was going on with him, and people was talking about his age, and if you remember I said, I'm not scared because there was an AKA in the background. And look at what God has yes, done. God. Yes, God. Of about two weeks, God has sent some strength. He has sent, got some people scared. Now all they want to talk about is somebody's race. They, and they're confused. They don't know whether they're black or Indian or all that kind of stuff. But God is good, amen? amen? And we have to trust Him like that. You know, faith is not what you can see. Faith is what you cannot see. I, I believe my Bible, you know, my little Bible knowledge tells me that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right. And the evidence right. of faith is that you can't see it. And if you could see it, it wouldn't be faith. And I'm challenging you to continue to trust God in faith. We have a big pill to swallow. We trust in God for this mortgage refinance, and we're trusting him to be prepared financially for $15,000 in the next 30 days, actually the next 27 days. Amen. Now, none of y'all can Amen. see that. No, you like me, you look at your bank account and say, where it's going to come from? But it's good you can't see it because you have to have faith in order for this to happen. Amen. Our teams have been at work, and if you notice, I sent the message out. If you're not on a team, join a team. And some of you don't even know how you got on a team. Well, I'll put you on a team because we only have certain people that join in with our meetings and our business affairs, so I put the teams together. But the teams are not exclusive to those people. If you think you can help out um, on the welcome and greeting team, join it. If you think you can help out on the financing team, join it. If you think you can help out um, on our communication team, join it. If you think you can help out with marketing and, and advertising, join it. This is going to take a joint effort from everybody. And let me tell you, I was on the phone line with Deacon Harris with the men who were for Kamala Harris, and guess what? I forgot she had the same last name as Deacon Harris, so uh, something was good about it. Hey. We was on that call, and, and the men across the country raised $1.3 million. I know I didn't have that kind of money. I just donated my little 20, 25 dollars, and next thing I knew, it was 1.3 million dollars. So just because we're looking for 15 thousand dollars, just because we're asking every family if they could to donate a thousand dollars, whatever you can give would be a blessing. We have been blessed. Our financial team has been working so hard. Um, Deacon Coro, Brother Alan Hargrave. Grove, Alan Hargrove and uh, Reverend Johnson have been working hard, and we now have a QR code. So you should have a new letter sitting in your lap, and you can just take your phone, and you just take the, go to the photo, go to the QR code, and you can donate right there on PayPal. And we're going to get this on our website, we're going to get this out to people on cards, my print is working so we can have a new sign outside with the QR code. And we want to funnel all the money that we can into our Need Purpose Partnership account 
so that we will have the money to do the things that we need to do. Not only $15,000, we need to pay the Silver Home Coral Award. We still need improvements that need to be done. Um, we said 15, but we don't know what it's going to cost us for some of the other details going through. And guess what? If they roll it over to the mortgage and they do all of that, we've got money that we've been putting together because in five years, four years, I'm sorry, in four years, we want to celebrate 100 years of this building being up. Amen? Because God said, he didn't say that the church, Pentecostal church or, or, or uh, Presbyterian church. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen? Amen. We have been obedient in our giving and we have been uh, obedient as we can in our living and that I told you a couple of Sundays ago um, when uh, I was preaching that morning star, your faithfulness will be rewarded. The fact that we have been trying to uh, participate with the New Hope Association and the annual session is coming up. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Saturday it's going to be the pastor's brunch. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. I think the tickets are 20 25 dollars You can go to that. Friday night um, uh, service, and there'll be a Sunday service, which will be the moderator's address. We'll get that out to you so you can pick a night and join us all three nights if you like to just do church. But we're going to celebrate the annual session of the New Hope Association. And last week when I preached that a clear way, they reminded me that uh, we came in second place for the 201 women in white. Second place here, they have near Baptist Church. We'll take that. Let me pull out there, see the moderators, uh, Cynthia Robinson, the president. And because we were obedient and we made sure we uh, submitted our money for the 201 women in white, come to find out we were one of the second place winners. Actually, Deacon Newman Corp, if we, if we had not made $10 more, we would have been in first place, right? Ah. So God is good. We, we are just so happy. We were there, um, Deacon Okoro, Brother Hendricks, and uh, Deacon S. Longshore and I, we were there. We, we marched up proud about what God was doing, and we ended up getting our second place award. Amen. And so we're thankful Amen. for that. When we give, one of the things about giving online and giving through, through PayPal and those uh, give the buy or Zell. Um, immediately you get a response that says thank you. And so we want out those of you who are watching us, those of you who are here who are donating by cash or by check, uh, please let me know. If you make a donation to the Near Purpose Partnership and you don't get a thank you, let me know immediately because that means we are doing something wrong. Our trustees need to be writing their names down of those who are giving. We have a donor who may be very helpful if we can get a connect with him and his contacts. Uh, he has blessed us personally. Uh, he probably could have done more business-wise, but he blessed us personally because he probably just gives often all around. And this is the letter he said. Please accept this donation to be used towards anything you deem worthy for it to be used towards. Once again, congratulations on your 10-year anniversary. It is truly a great accomplishment and certainly one to be proud of. Wishing you the best of luck with your ongoing improvements, fundraising campaign. Your mission is such an important one because Nia Fellowship is such an important part of the West Orange community. All the best, Roger Snyder. And Roger Snyder is the own, owner of Snyder Hardware on Main Street, which just celebrated their family's 100th year owning that business. He is the president of the Chamber of Commerce. And he, I thought not probably to donate to us. I was telling him that I gave him near purpose partnership. He's probably said that was just too much to, for, for him to remember. That's why he said, take, put it towards anything you deem necessary. But that's the kind of support that we're looking for. That's the kind of support that we would get. Our communications team was on it, and we had front page on um, the Essex News, and that's where he saw us. 
he even said he was a little jealous because we've been on that front page three times in the last year. He said, I don't know how you're doing, but you're doing it. And I said, I said, Brother Snyder, you know me. I, I don't let no grass grow up under my feet. And I'm just trying to do what God has called us to do. So we are excited today. We are going to commune today, believing that God has breathed a new life into us as we get to doing what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. And I want you to stay in prayer. Stay in prayer because there's always, in the midst of good things happening, there's always some challenging things going on. You know, we thank God first because we know that last week, this time, we had many who were not with us still in recovery. Not one week, but two weeks in recovery. So we thank God for our brother AJ being here. Thank God for our sister Adriel being here. We thank God for our sister Pat Session being here. To God be the glory. Because we never know. I didn't even realize that when I got up early and was shot to the hospital because I wasn't getting the information to go see Sister Pat Session in the hospital and make sure that she was okay. She didn't know I was going and, and y'all know I just do stuff, you know. And Lord have mercy, I almost gave a heart attack in the hospital. They said she didn't have one business and she saw it. I said, oh Lord, don't let me excite her too much. But watch this, I did not know that my daughter, my surrogate daughter, one of my daughters, my basketball team daughters, uh, Tiffany Franklin, who we funeralized her father that Monday, in the same hospital, an hour prior to me getting there, her dad had breathed his last breath. Wow. We never know. Huh. We never know. And that's why we stay in prayer and we believe God. And when he heals us and he gives us victory, we should be ready to jump up and run for the Lord. All folks used to say, I'm running and I'm running for my life. 99 and a half won't do. Amen? Amen. So we go to pray. We're praying with seriousness. We're praying with belief. And we're praying knowing that God is going to meet the need and make a way out of no way. So get yourselves ready for prayer now as our worship leader comes back and prepare us to be that sanctuary in the world. And our thought for the week, you don't worry about fitting in when you are custom made. All right, man. The Word teaches us this is the confidence we have in approaching God, and if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. We are instructed to pray without ceasing, and when we pray in earnest, we will find God right where He said He would be. So let us prepare to go before the Lord, following the song of preparation, Deaconess Luella Longshore will lead us in prayer.
For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Father God, we come this morning and we're grateful. We come, God, before we dare ask you for anything. We want to say thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, because you have, you keep on showing us that, God, that you are still moving. No matter what comes in our lives, God, no matter what we may be going through, dealing with, God, you always show up on time. And, God, for this we want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for those who you have brought back to us, Father God. But we know it's nobody but you. And for this, God, we say thank you, God. God, we ask you to bless those, God, who are sick, bereaved, God. Let them know that you are still God. And besides you, there is no other. So, God, we say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your healing touch. We thank you, God, for your power, God, that only you have, Father God. We thank you, God, because you are God. And for this, God, we say thank you. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every individual under the sound of my voice, God. We ask you to continue to bless us, God. Keep our minds, God, focused on you, God, and what you have for us, God. God, we know that nothing is too hard for you, God. So we continue to stand on your promises day by day, God. God, we ask you to continue to be with the Nia Fellowship Baptist Church. All churches open in your name, God, we ask you to continue to be with the churches. God, we ask you just to bless our pastor, the whole entire first family. Lord, we ask you to bless all of us, God, because we know, God, that we need to, God. Continue to be, be with the brothers of our church, God. Be with plant, Father God. Just be with us, God. Keep us, God. Keep us this day, God. But we know not what this week holds, God. We know that you hold the future. And God, that you are still in control, God. So keep our minds, God, focused. Continue to be with our, our nation, our world, God. But we know, God, that you are still in control, God. And God, you just have your way, Father God. So you just bless like only you can, Father God. So God, just have your way. God, we ask you to open our ears today, God, as the word comes forth. So that we can apply it to our daily lives, God. So that we can live each day, God, knowing that you are still God, that you are still in control. So God, we say thank you. God, we know that only you, God, can make a difference, God. So continue to keep us, God. Continue to lead us and guide us, Father God. Let us know, God, that we can only make it with you, God, and through you, God, all things are possible. So again, God, we say thank you, and we lift your name. We give you glory, we give you honor, because you and you alone are worthy of this, God. We do say thank you. And Lord Jesus, Savior Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 by the anointed and appointed our beloved Professor Sam Lewis, yes. Pastor Platt will plant his feet in time and share with us what thus says the Lord. Let us pray with and let us pray for our pastor, for we know he will preach with power and conviction as he is led by the Holy Spirit. And may each of us be blessed by the word from on high. Good morning. Sometimes we put ourselves in changes and 
put ourselves in chains. And we need God to deliver us. So this song speaks speak to that. Speak to someone who has been beat down, drug out, and looking for hope and looking for change. And we know that it comes only through Christ. So we say to him.
see my grandson walking through the door. God is just amazing. The new breath of life uh, in the valley. Uh, most of this sermon was inspired uh, uh, by him and in my spirit. Uh, history tells us. Let me give you a history lesson real quick. History tells us. Uh, uh, you all need to know why I get excited about being in this location. It tells us that approximately 100 years ago, a group of neighbors decided a church should be established in the South Valley Road area, prompting one resident to donate the property at the corner of South Valley and Meeker Streets for a small chapel which was primarily used for church school. Eventually, a Presbyterian congregation was founded in 1908, and a Presbyterian church was officially organized in 1911, and in the, by the 1920s, the chapel was too small, and the current sanctuary, which we are in, was built. It was awarded first prize in the annual Presbyterian architectural competition as the plan best adapted the need of a congregation of the Ridgeview Presbyterian Community Church's size. I have to keep that in my heart for the historical commission because they seem to not know this stuff. But the, the town historians seem not to know this stuff. How could just a little old boy from Newark get this information? I don't know. The building was completed in 1928. This building brought a breath of spiritual life into a community that can only find the spirit of the Lord when they venture outside of the valley of West Orange. Uh, the Ridgeview Presbyterian Community Church thrived and was very progressive as they called the Reverend Betsy Crimmins to become its first woman pastor and the first female pastor of 1984. Oh, Reverend Johnson, I got some more history. And this historical come commission on. ended up mess, mess with the wrong person. Come on, come we, on. we can't be historic. We, we got a, a, a church that won an award. We got a church that had the first woman pastor. Come and y'all don't know about this? The Reverend Karen Hyperston, PhD, was called as Ridgeview's pastor in 1993. She became Ridgeview's longest serving pastor, serving until 2009. Their mission was to serve the community by sharing the word of Christ and they work to serve a greater humanity through mission and outreach. I came to teach y'all something. I, I didn't just come to get y'all hyped up and be emotional and say we need to raise money. I need to teach you something. We are trying to submit some history here. We're trying to hold on to what God put here from the beginning that the devil tried to destroy. Legend has it that the church was full of life with more than 100 young people in Sunday school, but four, somebody say four, four older people did not support the vision of the young people's involvement in the church, and the congregation eventually began to dwindle and became a deceased church. The church eventually merged with two other churches to form the United Presbyterian Church of West Orange. One might say that the older people's vision killed the church. But somebody said, you can't kill the church. Because what God has put together, oh my goodness. Let no man put a that ain't in my notes. That's just me preaching with the Holy Ghost. The church would eventually have a fire and become desolate for two years. The once vibrant Ridgeview Presbyterian Church became a dry bone huh. in the valley. Come on, come on. 2013, the Lord spoke through Dr. Marion Franklin and Pastor Niles Wilson to inform me about a vacant church in the valley, and I inquired about the building and made it a part of a PowerPoint presentation as one of the young remember that, right? As one yeah, of the yeah, churches. Yeah, yeah. See, some folk think this stuff just happened. Uh, somebody said, Papa, when did that happen? That year is another meeting that you missed. Uh, Trusting in on. the vision of God, we agreed to pursue the acquisition of the deceased church as a new worship site. Prior to the acquisition by Nia, many people had made unsuccessful attempts. Uh, people that I know that live around here, Councilman Rutherford, you know, Pastor Rutherford, and other people were trying to get this, and nothing would go through. But 
God breathed life and excitement into Nia with the spirit of preparation called Project Pack Up. Prepare to advance Christian kingdom building with a united purpose. And this initiative helped restore a desolate dry bone in the valley. After much hope, prayer, pledges, and promissory notes and faith in God, Nia completed the successful acquisition of this church building on July 18, 2014. And Nia marched into the church on July 27, 2000. 14, 10 years ago. And now Nia dares to launch a capital campaign to reignite the safe quality of life in the valley. It came with a question, y'all. The question is, is Nia ready to be reignited? Another question is, can Nia embrace and articulate the vision and mission statements uh -huh. as a church? Yes, yeah, you got to go to the website to know what it is. The final question is, can Nia reignite the dry bones that the devil has tried to keep lying in the valley? There's still some dry bones laying around. In the text, Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones came to him after God had directed him to prophesy the rebirth of Israel in chapter 36. God announced through the prophet that Israel would be restored to her land. However, this promise seemed impossible in the light of Israel's present condition. Israel was dead as a nation. It was deprived of his land. It was deprived of his king. It was the pride of his temple. Israel had been divided. Look at that word. Somebody say divided. Because they keep trying to do that at our highest level. Divided and dispersed for a long, long, long time. So long that unification and restoration seemed impossible. So God gave Ezekiel the vision of the dry bones as a sign. God transported Ezekiel into a vision, uh, to a valley full of dry bones and directed him to speak to the bones. Somebody say, speak to the bones. Sometimes you got to talk the stuff that won't move. Sometimes you got to talk the stuff that's become dormant. Sometimes you got to talk to that knucklehead in your family who just won't listen and they keep being crazy, doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Sometimes you got to talk to him. Somebody say, talk to him. Ezekiel was to tell the bones that God would make breath into the bones and they would come to life. Just as in creation, the creation of man, when God breathed life into Adam, he was only clay. He was only something that God put together. He had no use, but until God to be breathed some breath into Adam, then some stuff started to happen. So let me tell y'all, y'all not going to get out of the situation you in until you let God
breathe. Somebody say breathe. breathe. God continued to breathe. He began to breathe into this church. He breathed that one committed tech person. He breathed that one iPad. He breathed that one keyboard player. He breathed that one drummer. He breathed that one Facebook page. He breathed that one Zoom link and a committed pastor and preacher. And guess what? We never closed the church. is happening. 
happening right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. He's rescuing you right now. You think you just showed up at church? No, he's rescuing you right now. You think you just came to me at a visit? He's rescuing you right now. You think you just logged on just because? He's rescuing you right now. Whether you see it or not, God is getting you out of the situation that you're in. Breathe on me, uh, 
here until my will is one with yours, Lord, to do and endure. Breathe on me. Somebody say, breathe on me. Breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with you the perfect life all eternity. I'm ready, Lord. Breathe. I'm going to hold my peace. When you breathe, I'm going to hold it here. Village, he'll give you the power to make sure that the village. 
village is not crazy. That is sin. I don't come with any special handkerchiefs or any special promises. All I do come with is if you trust in God, your life will be better than what it is right now. You are as close to God as you want to be right now. It's not God's fault, it's your fault. Make him the center of your joy. Thank you. 
peace. God, we thank you for every penny, nickel, dime, quarter, dollar that has been given. God, we thank you because it will all make a difference. Don't let anybody think that their giving is not important. God, we know that there are some big givers and small givers, but we know that as long as they give, as a cheerful giver, you will be a blessing. Not because they gave, but because they had the desire to give. Yes. Bless those who gave and those who did not have the opportunity to give. And allow us all to see you as the center of our joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we move forward, getting ready for our communion. But prior to that, we will have our period of election as we get ready for the right hand of fellowship. We ask that those would get in place to do what it is that God would have us to do as we move forward. Those of you who are watching us, this is our formality. What we do is we bring a member in. But understand clearly, we're more excited about you getting to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior than we are about you becoming a member because we're no longer looking for members. We're looking for disciples. So when you join, we're looking for people who join because they want to be a part of the team. Amen? Amen. I'm not like Steve Kerr. I'm not going to put no talent on the bench. If I got a Jason Tatum, he should be playing in the game. So if you out there, we want you playing in the game. Come on, put your hands together as our church clerk comes. And you know she moves a little slowly with her hat cocked to the side. Getting ready to bring a word. The next movement in our church is a very special one indeed. We welcome new members into the church. And so, having been baptized and completing a period of training and orientation led by Pastor Platt and the Deacon's Ministry, we are excited. We are just pleased to present Gideon McLaughlin as a candidate. And after that, we will invite Deaconess Harris, who will introduce members making presentations to our newest members. That's the plan. Amen, amen. This time we invite our Deacon Chair to come forward. Is our Deacon Chair in here? Oh yes. We invite our Deacon Chair to come forward. And we would uh, ask that uh, a motion be offered on behalf of accepting our brother Gideon McLaughlin to be a new member of the Nia Fellowship Baptist Church. After having a period of orientation, after accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we, the Deacon's Ministry, we, the Deacon's Ministry, recommend that our brother Gideon McLaughlin have full rights and privileges of Nia Fellowship Baptist Church. Amen. There's a motion on the floor that we accept Gideon McLaughlin as a new member of the Nia Fellowship Baptist Church. Is there a second? It's been probably moved a second that we accept Gideon McLaughlin as a new member of the Nia Fellowship Baptist Church. Question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposes? In the words of my pastor T-Bell, nobody but the devil. Amen. And so at this time, put your hands together as we have accepted Gideon McLaughlin as the new pastor, I mean, new member of the New Fellowship Baptist Church. <laughs> we never know. We might be the next pastor of the New Fellowship Baptist Church. 
Notice he looked at me when I said, new pastor. <laughs> this time we turn it over to the hands of our deaconess ministry as they will lead the presentations that will be given out. Good morning, dear family and friends. God has blessed us tremendously by bringing to us the mighty warrior, Gideon. Amen. Now, Gideon, if you don't know the story yet, you will hear the story of Gideon, the mighty warrior. Yes. We are about passing this torch. And I can't think of anybody better than to pass it on to the mighty warrior, Gideon. We love you from the day you were born up until now. And so we are just happy and tickle pink that you will come and give yourself to God and give your hands to us. So we're going to bless you and equip you and give you whatever you need journey until you get the age of your grandpa <laughs> four generations here everybody's just going to keep you strong and just make sure that your journey is fruitful so we're going to bless you today with some gifts and tools that you will use to help you on this journey your deaconess Ladies, Gigi will present to you the Bible, your grandma will present to you the membership certificate saying that you're a member of the year with all the rights and privileges. Marcus will present to you the baptismal certificate. Longshore will present to you the Constitution and Bylaws. In that order, please. Thoughts unless it's written, so I'm 
family and friends, today we gather and we enjoy to celebrate my nephew's baptism at New Fellowship Baptist Church. At just 11 years old, he has made a profound and meaningful decision to embrace his faith and embark on this spiritual journey. We are incredibly proud of his commitment and the bright future that lies ahead of him. May his path be filled with blessings, love, and unwavering faith. Congratulations, dear nephew, on this special day. And I present to you this certificate of baptism, which certifies that you have been baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From the bishop to the pastor. Yes! Come on, bishop, pastor! I know that's right! I know what you can. I can come just to welcome you again and just thank God for you stepping up and taking this opportunity in your life that you will never, never regret. So I come before you to present to you the church constitution and bylaws. Now you know at your age, no matter where you, where you go, that you know there are guidelines, there are rules and regulations, even at home, or should we say especially at home, there are rules and regulations that you have to adhere to. So this book right here, um, you can read it, it's something you don't understand, of course, your pop pop and your mom will definitely explain it to you in more detail, um, the rules of near fellowship at this church. So at your leisure, you can read it, as I said, and um, get more understanding of the rules and regulations of near fellowship at this church. So again, we say welcome, God bless you, and that we are here for you. God bless you. Mommy's back there supporting you. You join the church on your own. <laughs> we say what I want. Well, here's Mommy's daddy coming to you. <laughs> on behalf of Mommy, Daddy, Gigi, Uncle Marcus, and the Neal Fellowship Baptist Church, this is a new Baptist Church manual. One of the things that Papa and Gigi always say to you is that you should be reading. And if you're going to make it to the NFL, you need to be one who is bright and smart and you can develop your own businesses, but you need God. So you have some reading material that you can have for you. I want you to read it and ask me every question about everything in the book so you'll know why you're Baptist, You'll know why you're in this denomination, and you'll know why you're serving God. Love you with the love of God and with the love of Papa. Amen. We ask that you will stand with us. We want to give Gideon the right hand of the fellowship. You will follow Lady Gwen and I as we hear some marching music. Whatever you want to play, Sister Kyle. Whatever you think would be best that you would play, we're going to march around. And if you would, if you would like to come up and join us as we give him the right hand of fellowship and welcome him as a full member of the New Fellowship Baptist Church. God bless you. Welcome. What a fellowship, what a joy divine on the everlasting love. What a joy, what a joy.
be seated in the presence of the Lord. We move directly into our communion service as we will complete and be out of the way for the Rhema Church, which will be returning on today. Our church covenant, we pray that you would join us as we say it in chorus and prepare for our communion. Join me as we read. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, will solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards his expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk, to serve respectfully in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort, and stir up each other unto every good word and word, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who will call us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we can engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. We pray that you would hold fast to that as we invite our deacons to prepare the communion table as we get ready for remembering our Lord and Savior with the Lord's Supper.
Dearly, Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity, this privilege to partake of this bread, to be refreshed by the refreshment of the juice. We are so thankful that you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived among us, who was crucified and died, but on the third day rose up again, and now sits high as our Lord and living Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you will take these elements, that you will bless them, that you will anoint them, that you will transform them into those elements that will edify our very souls. Let us not leave here the same way that we came, recognizing that we were bought with a price and that our lives are not our very own. So Lord, we continue to rely on you we trust your love. We are so thankful for the grace that you continually bestow upon us. Now may the grace, may the love, may the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to not only abide with us, but also consecrate these elements for our use during this communion experience. Amen. Yeah. 
never lose his power to stand with me. I invite you to partake in remembering that day, the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. He took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body. He said, you broke it for me. Let us do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that this communion will create a new life in the midst of your own battle, putting you in a place where you can be strong with God. This is why we don't run from communion. We run to communion so that God can help us fix whatever our challenge is. They went out to the Mount of Olives and they sang hymns and we have focused on a hymn that we feel is prophetic and one that will bless our lives. A hymn in the form of a song David wrote, Psalm 23. We ask that you would join us and recite it. If you do not know it, we ask that you would pull it up on your phone or read it if you have it available from your pew. If not, just listen and embrace it, for we believe this song will carry you through. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Let your spirit reignite any dry bone in your life, but most of all, let God breathe a new breath of fresh air in your life, and you tell somebody about Jesus. We invite all men, young men, all men who are here, meet Deacon Harris back in the overflow room. We have some information we want to share. We want you to join us in this effort as God will bless, bless us moving forward.